What's up everyone, welcome back to our lawn and today we got a bit of a niche video. Today we're talking about a homeowner owning or purchasing a commercial hydraulically driven walk behind wide area mower. And I, there's not a huge pool of people that I think this is the right option for, but for those of us with larger yards that really do enjoy the mowing, for me, I really enjoy the aspect of mowing that revolves around walking. I like the walking experience and I didn't want to lose that. However, a 21 inch mower on my property was just not feasible to maintain good cultural practices because it took too long to have good mowing habits. So I got fortunate enough to find this guy, which is a Gravely Pro Walk uh, 1548. So it's a 48 inch floating deck. Floating means that it's on these little poles that will float up and down as the scalp wheels touch. And let me tell you, it is the dream. I am so happy I have this. I do not exaggerate when I said it changed my life. And here's why. The first thing is the speed of mowing. So yesterday I conducted a little experiment that I thought was fun. We'll take a watch through that. I'll maybe put it at the end. You can skip to there and then come back or you can just wait until the end to watch. Long story short, thousand square feet, one minute and two seconds. My Honda 21 inch walk behind two minutes and 13 seconds. So we're talking about a 55% savings on your time. But there's probably other pieces of equipment that can do that for you. So let's kind of talk through, and I fielded some questions from all of you via a community post yesterday. So let's talk through how to go about buying one of these and maybe if you should buy one of these. And so the first thing to talk about with anything like this, when you're gonna buy anything, the first thing to talk about is how much it costs. So I absolutely found a banger of a deal and got this behind me for $600. Staying fairly consistently active on Facebook Marketplace, I've never once seen one of these for sale for any less than 1500. So figure you're gonna buy an older piece of equipment with probably 1500 to 2000 hours on it for somewhere in the realm of between 1000 to probably $2,500 used. Now that's a lot, but the only real available homeowner option for a wide area walk behind mower is a Toro Time Master, which is only 30 inches, and that is $1,100 new, and very rarely do I see them used for less than 750. So now we're kind of talking in a relatively similar ballpark. Now granted, that's a new piece of machinery versus a used piece of machinery. The other aspect of cost is going to be the cost of ownership. And now with this guy, if nothing breaks, cost of ownership is almost exactly the same. It's just a few more dollars because it's a bigger motor and requires a little bit more oil and it probably uses a little bit more fuel than my Honda. So cost of ownership, spark plugs. Now you gotta buy two spark plugs rather than one and you know a little bit more oil. So that type of cost of ownership is really about the same. Where it starts to become a problem is if things break. And this is where I can kind of take an opportunity to address a question um, that, that somebody posed, which was like red flags and things to look for when purchasing. So the really expensive stuff, and, and I'm not, let me, let me be very clear up front here, I'm not a mechanic, I don't really know, but the really expensive stuff to replace is obviously the motor. So we gotta make sure it's running and in good working condition. The next things are the hydros and I think some of the components of the mower. But if it's just belts and stuff like that, that's all fairly cheap to, to make. So the things you wanna make sure that it's running properly, that the PTO seems pretty smooth, like I just had the PTO clutch evaporate basically in, in use, and that was about a $500 repair. They did oil change and some other stuff, but realistically it was about 500 bucks to replace that PTO. And each one of those wheel, the motors to drive the wheels, the hydro motors, each one of those are like, four, five, six hundred dollars in there each. So you wanna make sure that the machine is driving well and running well and all of everything engages and turns on and runs fine. So if you're going to go visit somebody, it's probably likely that they owned it as a business. We're operating it 40, 50, 60 hours a week and it's it's seen a lot of action, but these are commercial pieces of machinery that are built to do that. I know like Pete's right that he had before, or Pete's uh, X mark that he had before he purchased the new right was you know 20 years old and had done a tour of commercial duty. So. These commercial pieces of equipment will last forever. They're built like absolute tanks. Some things you're gonna to need to purchase that maybe you wouldn't have thought about otherwise is you're gonna need some uh, sockets for an impact if you wanna get the blades off of here. You can probably do it with a wrench, but I would not be interested. I bought sockets specifically for my impact driver so that I can get these blades on and off relatively simply. Another thing that you might not consider is jacks. So you can't just get underneath this thing unless you wish to meet your maker or at least have a very bad time. You might not die immediately if somebody finds you soon enough and lifts it up off you. So what I actually do is I set a jack here and then it takes just about everything I got to hold it down and then I'll kick that jack in and that'll hold it up. 
The other thing is you might want to have a trailer. If you don't, I will say my local equipment dealer for uh, Gravely Toro, uh, what else would that be, Aaron's? They charge a $60 delivery fee. So for $60, they'll come pick it up and bring it back when it's done. Somebody had asked a question about types of attachments that you can use, and I don't really know how to address that. These aren't tractors, they're purpose-built mowing pieces of machinery, but you can buy things like for the walk-behinds, you can buy sulkies that you can hook onto the back and then you stand on that, and then it'll allow you to go a little faster because you're not walking. I have no interest in that because I literally bought this to walk. I know in some of the newer models of these things too, you can buy like wheelbarrow attachments that'll hook on the front. Um, I'm sure if I wanted, I could pull my uh, four by eight foot, you know, lumber leveling drag behind it. I could hook it onto the hitch and that would be fine. I'm sure it would pull a gorilla cart, although it'd be kind of finicky because you'd be almost straddling the cart. Um, but it's not really, you know, it's, it's not a tractor replacement. If you need a tractor, this, you don't want to buy one of these. Somebody asked about uh, mulching and bagging kits. I don't actually know. I'll do a little bit of research and then flash that up on the screen if I can figure out how much a mulching kit costs for these things. Um, DIY, I know I've seen a couple different videos about people welding on, you know, a piece of sheet metal to the end to just to prevent the side discharge. That's not really mulching because then it's just throwing all the clippings into that door and then they're just dropping down into like a windrow. So mulching kits actually encloses each of the blades into its own little circle so that it's, everything stays in there and it mulches and then settles down. Um, but I'll flash up how much those cost. I don't have one, I only have the side discharge option. And the same goes for the bags. I'll try to do the same kind of research for you there as well. And when I say bags, it's usually a big metal basket that hangs off the side where it discharges right there. And for me, I think the biggest thing to talk about is that um, mowing. So somebody asked specifically the height of cut this will go from one inch to four and a half inches in half inch increments. I will say on the lower height of cut settings, um, you're gonna need a really, really, really smooth and flat yard. Even at two and a half inches, any sort of undulation really starts to scalp pretty badly just because of the width of that deck. The wheels do help prevent up against that a little bit, but they're really only keeping the blades, you know, a half inch off, half inch to an inch off the ground. It's still gonna scalp some spots. Somebody asked about the mowing experience in comparison to a normal garden tractor. Um, for one, you're walking, which is why I prefer this. Uh, basically, this is a zero turn mower that instead of sitting on, you're walking behind. Now, what does that mean in terms of comparison to this to say a, you know, 48 inch John Deere tractor that you could pick up? The biggest difference is going to be the maneuverability into small spaces and how quickly you can turn around. So if you're trying to actually do stripes where you go down and come back and then go down, if you're doing something like that, this will snap around way faster with a quick little three point turn Again, don't let one of the wheels stop and just spin and dig a hole. Then a lawn tractor. I know growing up I mowed with a ride-on lawn tractor and all of the little detail work was so tedious because you're dealing with a turning radius. Where this is turning radius is zero, hence zero turn. But I think overall time it's going to take you to mow is going to be fairly similar. Like I said, I choose something like this because I prefer the walk versus the seated mowing experience. But mowing as an experience, I love it. It took me a little while to get used to because it's a different experience. With a push mower, you're in charge. With this thing, you are not in charge. You need to be on those levers, on the controls for speed and, and how it handles. And if you're not, it is going away. And it is going on its own journey until you let go of the, the operator presence handles and it all kills. But from a cut quality, you save a ton of time. The cut is fantastic. The stripes can't be touched. My Honda doesn't stripe at all. These, this thing stripes like crazy. I don't have a striping kit. It's got an old raggedy uh, rubber flap that comes down, down behind the deck. And this thing just stripes like crazy. You throw a Checkmate striper on the back and it'll blow your mind. The safety protocols. Even bringing this back here, I forgot a step and I killed the motor rather than turning it off correctly. So these come with a handbrake, a parking brake, which is this right here. Then there's this thing that grabs onto the wheel and doesn't let it spin. So there's a lot of sequencing of events. So we have to turn it on. So long as that handbrake is down, your operator presence handles don't have to be down. But if this handbrake is engaged and you go to move, set the speed, so that is how fast I will go forward, the engine will immediately kill. If you go to turn the PTO on, when that handbrake is done, it will immediately kill. So I've killed this motor a bunch of times just because I forget my order of operations, I forget what I'm doing, and all of a sudden the motor turns off and I gotta turn it back on. Another factor you may not have considered is whether or not you have a place to put this. So I'm fortunate enough I got space at the back of my garage is extended out a little deeper than your normal garage and I can fit it back there, but she large and I'll do a little panorama and you can see you're gonna have to give some considerations to whether you can fit five feet by five feet somewhere in your garage. 
One thing I would anticipate and expect too when you buy old pieces of equipment is that whoever was the previous owner in operating their business will have accepted some interesting repair tactics for the sake of profitability and for the sake of just having their fleet work but not be ideal. The biggest one for my mower is to move in a straight line, these should be exactly together like that. For me to move in a straight line, I need to do something about like that. And the reason is how this plate attaches has to do with whether it is higher speed and more sensitive or a little bit lower speed and a little bit more um, accurate. And so I was getting somewhat frustrated with how the machine tracked and how difficult it was to go in a straight line. And so I did some research and I looked and sure enough, this is set up backwards. So I was like, I am a genius. I changed it all. And I was gonna be living the dream right up until I realized that the parts that are there actually don't even work at that other setting. So this is the only way with the parts that I have for this machine to operate. And that's fine. It's free, I have it. I just have to have the one lever a little bit further forward than the other one, and it'll go in largely a straight line. And realistically, you're always making little corrections anyway as the machine bounces over bumps or as it's going uphill or as it, you know, whatever happens, you're always making little adjustments to stay on course. And the biggest thing is not everybody gets to have stripes like this in their yard and the sun's down and this is only the first mow. I usually mow twice on the same pattern to harden them in. But those types of stripes are not something you see everywhere and it's something people will notice that's different. So you tack that on with the fact that I'm saving a ton of time, still being able to maintain the exercise that goes along with mowing by walking, still enjoying a nice little bit of time outside, walking around my yard, which I really do enjoy. Cost-wise, I'm fortunate enough that I'm in it for about what a new Time Master would be and I'm saving another you know, 15% or so of my time compared to that Time Master, which says it's gonna save you about 30 to 40%. This is 55% versus a normal 22 inch, 21 inch mower. And so I love it. I, I love it as an option for those of you with larger yards that you wanna retain that walk. You don't wanna just sit on a tractor and mow your yard. You wanna be active and engaged in that process. So I don't know if that's helpful and I don't know how many of, the, how many of you this is going to apply to, but if you do have a larger yard, you are looking for an alternative. Get on Facebook Marketplace, get on eBay, get on wherever and start to look for these things when they're used. Again, make sure the motor's running good. Make sure the hydros drive good. Make sure the mower deck's working good and you should be fine and you can find yourself some good value on there and something that's gonna last you a long time. This is my second season with this. I've just had to replace the PTO clutch. Uh, I did a couple small engine, little minor repairs, oil changes, that type of thing, and it's all been fine and working great for me. And I haven't had to spend $8,000 for a new one and I have something special not everybody gets to uh, enjoy mowing their lawn with. So thank you so much. Leave a comment with whether this is useful, whether this is something you've considered, whether this is something you're going to consider. If you already have one, let me know how you like having it, anything that you would maybe add to this type of conversation. Ask any more questions, I'll do my best. Again, I'm not the handy guy to answer those types of questions, but I will always try my best to find you an answer. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.